I'm just an average guy who loves the outdoors. I love to hunt and I love to fish. Somewhere along the way I ended up with a video camera in my hand. So now I'm just cruising around checking out cool destinations. So sit back, put your feet up and come on along. I'm Brian Whitens, and this is where I've been. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to mush your own team of sled dogs? Gliding silently down a scenic trail, across frozen lakes, along the open waters of a quietly flowing river. The feel of the trail whooshing by under the runners of the sled, the winter air in your face. The only sound, that of your team of dogs doing what they love to do most, pull. Sled dogs have been pulling people and cargo for hundreds of years, long before snowmobiles and airplanes. And I can tell you, when you're mushing along some remote trail in the true Canadian wilderness, your mind can't help but wander. Back to a time when dog sleds were the typical mode of transportation, the only mode of transportation for trappers and fur traders, for prospectors and mail carriers, for hunters, voyageurs, and travelers of all sorts. This part of my Ontario winter adventure brought me to Agamac River Outfitters, home of Run Silent Dog Sled Trips. This wonderful place is the result of the lifelong dream of John Oberg, who owns and operates the lodge along with his wife Daryl and daughter Joanna. A dream to live and operate in an area of endless wilderness. Agamac River Outfitters is a remote drive to fishing camp located at the north end of Indian Lake, about 18 miles north of the town of Ignace. Indian Lake offers great fishing for walleye, northern pike, lake trout, smallmouth bass, speckled trout, perch and whitefish, and they are the only camp on the lake. Accommodations include nine housekeeping cabins. They're open year round with fishing and hunting in the spring, summer and fall. Winter activities include ice fishing, snowmobiling, snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and of course, what brought me here, dog sledding. Joanna has always loved animals and dogs, and she was involved in 4-H and doing a lot of things with dogs and their friends. She had encouragement with other pe from other people as well, and she was just wanted to train them and always do something with them. And I never forget when uh, she just wanted two dogs, but she had been out <laughs> only two. <laughs> she had been involved with other friends that had had uh, sled dog teams and uh, even had an outfitting business to take people out and I tell you she was just dog crazy and uh, I'd get very excited every year in Ely in our old hometown where we would then have the races and go and go and watch the races at them right downtown they truck in snow and we'd go and watch the races and I, I just loved Nordic breeds I loved the whole history of dog sledding um, just the whole idea of, of being out there with a dog team in the northern northern wilderness uh, in the winter time, traveling by a dog team, it just seems so magical and uh, any, anything w with animals of course I loved so I, I just really was taken with the husky husky type dogs and but it was actually my friends who had I had done 4-H with and done dog training um, and obedience training and agility and stuff like that. Um, they're the ones that got into dogs through Jamie Nelson. And so when I went to their house, what they do is they'd get puppies from her and raise them and, and train them for the first year or so. And then she would take them back and train them and race with them. And so I went to their house and they're like, you want to go for a ride? So I'm like, sure. And that was my first dog sled ride before I ever got into, I, I liked Huskies up to this point, but I had never been actually on a, a ride and when we took off it was just magical you know the whole experience of the excitement building they're screaming they're jumping to go and then you take off and it's utter silence you know other than the swishing of the the sled runners on the snow um, the jingling of the snaps and the panting of the dogs it was just so quiet it was just absolutely magical and I was like this is so cool I've got to do this so it was uh, after that that as they say the rest is history <laughs> that was that was it, I was definitely hooked on it. So if you like the outdoors and you like dogs, it's, it's just the perfect, perfect thing. And it's, there's no more unique way to explore 
the north in the winter time than by dog team. So it's, it's definitely a unique experience. Watch Real Outdoors as they travel to a new and exciting destination each week. Real hunting and real fishing in the real outdoors. We have people as involved as they want to be in everything that we're doing. Harnessing dogs. Joanna gives a class and explains things, questions and answers. Show them how to teach them Show how to drive how to, the sled. Right on the sled. They stand right on the sled, gives the class, and uh, they get to try different little things before we ever hook up the dogs. They have to learn commands for the dogs, steering the sled. Um, safety is number one yeah, in everything really that we do. Safety, safety for people safety. and dogs. And so things can happen fast with dog sledding, so you just have to just be alert. Just like driving a car, you're always alert paying attention to your dogs, mostly your leaders, because they're the steering wheel of your team. Uh, watching the trail ahead of you, planning how you're gonna steer the sled. Never let go of the sled. This is your handlebar. You always wanna have a good grip on your handlebar, whether you're stopped or moving or tipped over and dragging. You always wanna make sure you hang on. The driver stands on these rubber grippy pads here, and you might have to kick the snow off a little so they don't get iced up and slippery. We've got three sets of brakes. This is your main stopping brake, this metal bar brake. If you want to stop, you step on that brake with all your weight. This piece of snowmobile track here, and this is your slowing down brake. Um, for going down hills, if you need to slow down, you always want to hold back a little bit on the downhills just to prevent the dogs from going too fast. You always want to have a tight, taut line from your lead dogs to your sled. So usually on the trail that means just maybe compensating by slowing down a little bit with your drag pad. And then we've got the third brake, which is called the snow hook, it's just basically a temporary parking brake. You want to keep the dogs moving. That's the goal in the uphills. You can't really push in the middle because of the drag pad, so you have to move to one side or the other and then pedal on one side and just, it's kind of an even kick that you're doing to help the dogs out. The sled will pull in the direction that your weight, the runner that your weight is on. And that's how you steer the sled, is by your weight, shifting your weight from side to side. The go command, we say hike, or all right, or let's go. Stopping command is whoa, same as with horses. Whoa is more of a calm, quieter command, just whoa. And the go command, you know, all right, let's go. So stuff like that is important to remember. Um, just for your information, G is right, Ha is left. But your team will basically be following mine, even though your leaders are G Ha trained. After Joanna gives the class, then she shows them how to harness dogs. And one of these other straps, the other side of the neck, and one of the other straps. And uh, everybody gets involved in that. People harnessing dogs. We check to make sure everything is right. Joanna's checking, I'm checking. This chest piece, this is the head hole. We show them how to hook up the dogs. To the dog's collar. To the do gang line. Snap and that on. The leader's in the front, and one by one you hook, get them all harnessed and hooked up when ready to go. And we want people to be we know that the dogs are friendly. They like to go, they can go around and pet any of the dogs they want to. And at first, it's like shock, all the noise. It can be a little scary for some people, I'm sure. And when we set the teams loose, they're just screaming to go and you hook them up. And again, as soon as you turn all the teams loose, they run silent. Unless they're young puppies sometimes that are. Yip a little bit so out of excitement for a few yards. <laughs> we always have a veteran dog running with the younger one whenever you're training so when they're old enough and ready enough to do a trip then we hook them up and but they're still all excited. They stand on here and they grab and grab the snow hook, yank it loose when you got your team hooked up and you hang it right there. Get that loose and then this your quick loose notch you just pull it like this and it's gotten tight by the time the dogs jerk, 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 ready to go, and you just pop that loose, and it just, and away you go, and you let the rope drag behind. Joanne 
one is always in the lead and we go out the upper gate to the north gate and we run out of our yard and, uh, and then each sled, I turn each sled loose after Joanna leaves and make sure everybody's going and then I follow. I'm always the last one out and they follow wherever she goes. <laughs> and we do trips between a half day is approximately 11 and a half miles or so. And a day trip is usually 20 to 25 miles. That's round trip. And depending on the conditions and how fast you go, so on a full day trip, we take people way out to a lake somewhere. We go past lots of other lakes, depending on what trail we're on. Everybody usually gets their own sled if we have enough sleds to go around. Otherwise, two people a sled, but it's always the most fun to have your own team, right, Joanna? It is, although it's fun to have someone in your sled to converse with as well. Yeah, so. to talk, because you yeah. have their undivided attention. <laughs> they can't go anywhere. We take people between ages of three years old average all the way to 83. We've taken lots of grandpas and grandmas and teach them how to mush dogs, right? Yeah. G. Very good. Good girls. So we do go out to, if it's a day trip, if we're doing a full day trip, we go out to a remote lake and we build, We get out there, we do our location, we tie each team off. I help tie each team off and Joanne and I work together and everything for the safety of the people, safety of the dogs. And uh, I always come last to make sure we get there. So we get out there and then we build, get some wood together and build a nice fire and uh, we have a full course meal that we set out there depending on what's available that day. Stick around for a warm fire and lunch along the trail. Watch Real Outdoors as they travel to a new and exciting destination each week. Real hunting and real fishing in the real outdoors. Just when you think it can't get any more peaceful, any more tranquil, you stop along the trail for lunch and life slows down yet another notch. Good girls. You become even more in tune with the wilderness. You see things you wouldn't have noticed just passing by. A set of mink tracks that disappear beneath an old log. A trail where a moose had passed through before the last snow. The barking of the dog seems to fade to a quiet and welcome chorus in the background. Gather up some wood, build a warm fire, pour a cup of coffee or hot chocolate, fire up some hot dogs, sit back, relax, and take it all in. The snow, the trees, the crackle of the fire, the peacefulness of it all, and good friends. What a great recipe for an experience you won't soon forget. Sitting by a warm, crackling fire in the still silence of the woods, Enjoying the simple pleasures of hot dogs, hot chocolate, and conversation is an experience in itself. So black I was getting. <laughs> in much the same way a shore lunch turns out to be one of the best parts of a day of fishing, a fire and lunch along the dog sled trail is certainly one of the highlights of this adventure. But the dogs are ready to run, and there's a lot more sights to see, more trail to cover. So, it's mush time. All right. It's nothing quite like being out in the woods when it's all still and quiet, traveling by dog team. It's such a unique way to travel. The nice thing about dog team, traveling by dog team, is you're more likely to see wildlife 
they're so quiet when they're moving that they, unless the animals smell you coming, they don't always hear you coming. So you can surprise lynx or moose or deer, fox. And I've had rabbits and squirrels right under the dog's noses before. And, but yeah, there's, it's just neat. Just all the nature experiences that we get out here. And the thing about dog sledding is you never know what's going to happen. My dad says you have to kind of expect the unexpected. And it's, I like that about it. Maybe that's why I'm drawn to it other than my love for dogs and the outdoors. Um, is, it's just always an adventure. You never know what each run and each mile of the trail is going to be different. The dogs are each individuals. They're not robots, they're not machines. You never know what they might do. They might have a bad day or have a good day. Or, you know, you just have to kind of work with them and make them a cohesive unit. They all are teammate members and they have to work together, learn to work together as a team. And some dogs don't like running next to other dogs, so you have to rearrange to kind of keep the team harmony <laughs> intact. And, so it's just, it's just always exciting, always a venture and live with dogs. You have to be patient. They're all very special and we, we give them a lot of love and attention. You know, people sometimes feel sorry for them, but they, it's not like we're making them pull. They love to do it. The hard part is usually holding them back. And they do get tired and they get sore and things like that, but you always got to make sure you give them enough rest and take good care of them. And Such a pretty trail. Too. My dad came up with the name Run Silent. One day my dad had a day off. He used to be a truck driver and was gone a lot. Um, so he had a day off and I'm like, well dad, let's, you know, I want to give you a ride because you're always helping me with the dogs and at the races and with their care and everything. And I want to, you know, let you experience what it's like when I'm getting to enjoy out there. And we didn't get going until late afternoon. And so we kind of ran, it got dark on us out there, but running under the full moon, it was just beautiful we were on some rivers and lakes and through the woods and just kind of a mixture of terrain. And he was like, wow, it's amazing how they truly run silent because they're just, they're so noisy. And when you're hooking up and everything, and when you're gonna you know, run them, they get very excited to go. And, and then as soon as you release that snub line, it's like just silent, you know, just absolutely silent. And that's what that night, that first dog sled ride he had with the full moon and um, running dogs into the full moon is when he came up with the name Run Silent. Come on, Haley. Add a girl. There you go. Watch Real Outdoors as they travel to a new and exciting destination each week. Real hunting and real fishing in the real outdoors. Joanne is the center of attraction. She's the racer. She's the one that got me into all this. Um, and I, I love it. I love the adventure of dogs and all. It's a lot of work. I'm glad I got him addicted to it. <laughs> so it's we can a lot share of work. this addiction. <laughs> we just enjoy seeing people enjoy themselves and getting to experience what we get to experience and just bringing that joy into their life. Okay. At the end of the day, you know, you feel like you've gotten to be really good friends with everybody and it's just yeah. really. You're it's a just team. really, yeah. We, we like to do smaller groups because we feel it's more personable. Only and some came back several times in a winter, and others came back year after year. And some only did it once, and they just had the memories. And then there was groups that we did, multi, you know, two or three day trips in a row. We go to a different location each day. Just, uh, we took a lot of school groups. These boys are so good, hardworking guys. Troubled teens and stuff like yeah, that. And good job, Tess. It seems to open people up to be good boy. out in the woods with the dogs. You know, a lot of people like animals, not everybody, but um, it just opens people up and you, they just feel more free to share and to talk. And it's just something about it that seems to connect with people. Oh boy, boy, you did so good. Yes, you did. I have a lot of wonderful memories of those people. And, uh, good job, Matrix. And uh, good job. just living an adventure with them each day and being part of their lives and them, them becoming part good of our job. lives. And, they always thank us for, for sharing our dogs with them and trusting our dogs with them. And I say, oh, we love to have company. Good job. You did good. 
Okay. So that's why we love being out here. We, we have adventure year round, and we just want others to you did so good. live the adventure. I just yes. love seeing people good. enjoy good. themselves year round. I really yeah. do. I mean, we have to make a living, okay. but I really enjoy serving people, and our whole family does. We're really good job. excited about serving people to the best of our ability. I hope to always have some sled dogs to run and more trails to, to go down and explore. I, I love exploring new trails. I think the dogs love it as much, if not more, than I do. And I love seeing their enthusiasm for the trail and for what lies ahead. Um, I love the bond that with the dogs that you get. I love, I love taking care of them, even though it's a lot of work. But um, just the exhilaration of doing well at a race or just having a good run, even if I'm not racing, just having a good run and everyone did well. It's just a, a sense of accomplishment and teamwork. Um, the magical moments that you, if you could bottle and capture those moments and sell them, you'd probably be a millionaire, you know, it's just, it's hard to describe the beautiful sunsets that you see, that we see together and different wild animal encounters. Um, it's just, it's just magical. It's just really, truly an adventure. I like the, that you never know what to expect. Every day is different, but just being out there, just being out there with the dogs and working together as a team. And, it's just not, there's nothing really that can compare to that. There are so many parts of a trip like this that will stick in my mind for years to come. First, there's the dogs. As their harnesses get slipped on and they get hooked up to the sled, they're hopping off the ground with excitement. Suddenly, Joanna says, let's go. Then, like somebody flicked a switch or turned a knob, it all goes silent. All you hear is the sound of the runners of the sled and the power and energy of 32 happy feet flying down the trail. There's no question, they love their job. Then there's the trip itself. Traveling through the Canadian wilderness by dog sled, gliding silently down a scenic trail, across frozen lakes, along the quietly flowing waters of the Agamac River. It's an experience I won't soon forget. And last but certainly not least, there's our hosts. A visit with John, Daryl, and Joanna is inspirational in itself. The way they take care of and the connection they have with their dogs is amazing. The way they enjoy what they do and the way they take care of their guests is something special in itself. It's not hard to recognize that they truly and sincerely do all they can to make certain your visit is something special. I truly enjoyed my stay here and I look forward to the day I can come back. So next winter when cabin fever sets in, Consider a winter trip to Ontario. Pay a visit to John, Daryl, and Joanna at Agamac River Outfitters. Put on a pair of snowshoes and take a quiet walk in the woods and spend some time with nature. Or maybe try some cross-country skiing. And by all means, find out what it feels like to mush your own team of dogs. Find out what it feels like to run silent. I'm Brian Whitens, and that's where I've been. <laughs>